boys welcome and today i am gonna be doing something that has been quite long requested ever since the launch of horizon 5 and kind of just one of those videos that you guys are always going to be able to come back to uh in the future if you don't have a sim rig right now or if you're planning on getting one or even if you play on controller this video is probably always going to be useful for you if you're looking to drift in some sort of video game or another now what am i talking about you may ask well essentially this is going to be a drifting tutorial namely focusing on simulation drifting because i know there's a lot of question regarding that out there but lots of these principles are going to be able to be applied to controller players or maybe keyboard i've never drifted on keyboard so i can't say for certain that it's going to be the same but at least controller lots of these principles are going to be compatible so i figure what better way to start off our video than showing you guys all my wheel settings for <laughs> I play on Xbox, um, but I have the Thrustmaster TX Leather Edition wheel. So I'm gonna stop quickly because lots of you always ask for my settings. So here you go. I'm pretty sure they're mostly default. A few things have been slightly changed, uh, but you can pause the video at any point. I think the biggest thing I changed was the centering spring scale here and then the damper scale. Those were probably the two biggest things. I gave a little bit more force feedback, but even if you ran default wheel settings, um, the biggest things are gonna come after this. The wheel settings don't really matter so much in your drifting or your control over the car. I have three main steps that we're gonna break this down into. And also keep in mind that I am using rear wheel drive in this video, and most of these tips are gonna be present for wheel wheel rear wheel drive, but I assume they'll still work on all wheel drive. I did used to drift on all wheel drive as well, but the first step is pretty much going to be knowing how much e-brake to use. And as you can see around lots of these corners, if I don't think I'm going to slide enough or I'm going to go too far or not far enough, I'm going to just hold the e-brake and that's going to allow me to hold that angle a little bit longer. Or if I need to start a rotation, I will use my e-brake. And lots of you may be curious because you don't see me pulling an e-brake. Um, I actually map my clutch pedal to be an e-brake. This is something that I don't know, maybe lots of people haven't possibly thought about doing, but it's super helpful, especially on console for me, where there aren't many or if any compatible e-brakes that work on console. And it's also just a nice, easy way to learn because you don't have to think about taking your hand off the wheel. You can constantly have both hands on the wheel, which is important and we will get to, but the first and foremost thing you should be getting used to is knowing how to use your e-brake because it's going to initiate all your drifts and help you hold out longer drifts and make it just look a little bit nicer. So now that we got the e-brake out of the way, it is the icing on top. Like you can drift without it. It's kind of like clutch kicking in my opinion, um, but definitely something worth learning and it's going to make a lot of your drifts a lot easier. But now we're gonna get to the second most important topic and that is actually the steering wheel. And I'm gonna cover a few things regarding this. So the number one thing is I actually run a 900 degree rotation on my wheel. Um, I don't know how important that is. Okay, I was just making sure the force feedback we still had. Um, but other than that, the main thing is you don't have to start on 900 degrees rotation if you're just learning how to use a simulation setup. Um, me personally, right when I got my wheel, I wanted to be like, like Gooseyus and G Too Fast and all the guys that had their wheels spinning crazy. So I put it on 900 degree rotation. And what that made me do actually was stop wanting to use my wheel because I just couldn't drift like them. I still can't, but obviously when you get a brand new wheel and you have no idea what it's doing, and you're giving it full rotation, you're gonna struggle a lot because it's a lot to look after, trying to track where your wheel is. You don't really have a feel for anything yet. So I kind of stopped using it altogether for a couple months, but when I came back to it, what I realized is I don't have to start a 900 degree rotation. So I bumped it actually down to 270, which might be a little extreme. If I were to recommend, I'd say 360. And as I got comfortable drifting on each rotation, I was able to move it up like 60 degrees every single day or however long it took to feel comfortable until I got to about 720. And from 720 to 900, there was no difference. I jumped all the way up and I was still able to drift just as smoothly. But the biggest thing I learned while drifting and building my way up like that is you're not actually steering with the wheel. You're kind of just guiding it in a direction you want it to go, catching it and then guiding it in the other direction. The biggest amount of steering you actually are gonna be doing on the wheel is just catching and slightly guiding. The car is really gonna steer itself. And the next step is the most important step in making sure it's able to do that. So 
Contrary to popular belief, maybe, steering isn't actually that important when it comes to drifting because the car is pretty much just going to do it alone. So if you have good e-brake control and good pedal control, which is our next point, this one's pretty much a no-brainer. It's just going to go exactly, I don't know, it's very hard to explain, but once you get to the point where you've mastered these other two processes, you're going to realize, wow, the steering is actually kind of just second nature. But that being said, make sure you start on a lower degree of rotation. If you're on controller, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, if you're just starting on wheel, put it on 360. That's not a bad place to start. Rome wasn't built in a day. And just know that pretty much every one of your creators that you like watching now started on a lower degree of rotation too. It's not really much of a secret. Secret, oh, good Lord. So let's hop into our last and final point here, which is definitely gonna be the most important without a doubt and what is that important step you may ask well it is the pedal control and i don't mean the throttle like my e-brake because i have that set to a pedal i mean how much gas you're using now i'm assuming that none of you are going out and immediately doing tandems so your brake pedal isn't actually going to be so important um once you get really good at drifting and you're really invested into it and you're doing tandems sure uh consider learning about how to use your brake and when do you use it but right off the bat if you're watching this video chances are you don't actually ever even have to worry about it i never even use my brake i'm not good enough yet but that being said the gas pedal is your most important aspect when it comes to drifting because your gas pedal is going to decide how much your tires are spinning, how much speed you have, how wide you're going to be carried throughout a corner. And it's pretty much what you're using to initiate and hold every single drift. Too much gas, you're going to spin out. Not enough gas, you're not going to be able to hold a good line. This is why gas is the most important thing to use. And it's kind of a hard thing to give hints on because it's you really just have to feel out even with every individual car how much gas is the appropriate amount of gas and you get a general idea and you start to learn quicker and quicker because you know what to expect but the these are these are a few main tips i use when i'm drifting every single time i'm transitioning from right to left in a car i'm letting off the gas tapping the e-brake and letting back on the gas again. Almost every single time, whether it's around a corner or just Arab drifting like this in the long straight road going very fast, the pedal control is always gonna be super important. So, although I can't tell you exactly what to do, this the main pointers, especially if you're rear wheel drive, you never really ever have to have the pedal down all the way, ever. That's just gonna make you spin out more than you'd like. And it's pretty much just finding the fine line every single time with every single car. How much pedal or how much gas am I going to have to give it or not give it to allow me to hold different corners? And then as soon as you get comfortable with different cars, you can have a good idea. These principles also work in every game. I happen to be displaying it on Forza Horizon 5. That's what I play the most, but I've drifted on wheel on Car X Drift Racing. I've drifted on wheel on Assetto Corsa. And these principles are very similar. It just comes down to the wheel itself is a little different in the steering, but pedal control is still the overarching most important thing when it comes to drifting. So boys, I know I did a lot of talking at you today and hopefully at least a little bit of it was useful. I'm sorry if it wasn't, but these are pretty much all the things I listen to and do when I'm trying to learn how to drift or was trying to learn how to drift. And keep in mind, I did just start using simulation. I want to say about July of this year, I started like taking it seriously and trying to learn it. So Again, it's not going to be instant, but it, it's not going to take you three or four years. You're always going to be getting better, but you don't need months and months of practice before you can actually hold the lines you want to tandem, whatever. So if this has helped you in any way, let me know down below. And if you made it to the end, let me know so I can give you a heart on your comment. As always, boys, we're going to see you in the next one. I'm out. Oh, peace. <laughs>